everyone and welcome to Being Black in Britain, the podcast that captures the nature and the essence of the black experience across the UK, starting with the north of England. Today, I'm joined by Esther, who is the founding director of Female Magic. Let's go. Esther, thank you so much for giving us your time. Of course on Being Black in Britain. It's really exciting to have you. And I'm really excited to kind of share with our audience who you are, what you do, um, what you are contributing to the community, specifically in Leeds, and sort of what your plans are really with female magic specifically. So first and foremost, what is female magic? Yeah, of course. So female magic is a holistic well-being brand Mm -hmm. that empowers and teaches women and girls um, about their emotional intelligence Mm. alongside teaching them how to take back control of their lives. In a nutshell, that's what we do. Um, Female magic wants to help you with the relationship with your mind. Beautiful. Very succinct. And why women? Why women specifically? Why not everybody? Because, you know, everybody needs a little bit of emotional intelligence. They do, but I'm a woman. <laughs> so I could only speak on my own thing. Yeah. Um, for me personally, on my own self-healing journey, mm. a lot of people like to share and project knowledge that doesn't necessarily help an individual. Yeah. And especially on my own journey, I would jump on other people's like self-care hypes and self-love and this, this and that. And mm. you know when it doesn't work, it yeah. can sometimes make you feel 10 times worse. Mm. So for the purpose of that specific reason, I focus on women. And I also focus on the, menstru- the menstrual cycle as okay. well, because naturally women have... Uh, we're a lot more in sync with our cycle than we realise. Mm. So I like to share that. A I like that. I like that. And how did female magic come about then? When did it begin? What was the heart behind it? Yes. Well, it's a huge story. Well, it's not that huge. But <laughs> <laughs> basically, I have a degree in broadcast media technologies. Right. right. So before lockdown, um, I was a freelancer. I okay. used to go to London a lot and travel around and do different journalistic things. Right. And the more I was doing it, I actually had a, a young child at this point, and the more I was doing it, I realised that it wasn't financially sustainable to, right. to, te- to keep doing this. And on top of that, I thought, where is this kind of creativeness within the North? Why can't right. I just do these kind of jobs within the North yep. and stay here? A huge inspiration for me was um, Black Girl Fest. Okay, I went yep. and filmed and presented at the the very first black girl fest and I thought I'd love to do something like this Mm. within the north Mm. and that's kind of that was the biggest inspiration behind the very first um female magic event which was in 2019 right and initially it was just supposed to be like kind of like a shubs Mm. a party just to celebrate women in the north Mm. but then the more people got wind of it the more professional it became a lot more Um, women wanted to showcase showcase their organizations they wanted to showcase their creativity and then it became a thing of okay we are now going to showcase and celebrate women of color within the north right and with that event we had over 200 people come and myself and my friends who were a part of it we had no like event experience we had no funding experience Mm. we just had a true passion Mm. behind the concept and then from there because I think so many people came we wanted to just push it yeah yeah and what has been that journey then in terms of developing the business side of female magic because yeah you've got an idea here and it seems to be like developing into this thing and everyone's responding to it but in terms of kind of establishing it as a brand an organization a business Mm. with a model of some kind what has that been like for you Hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's been incredibly hard. Um, the journey itself. So after a few events um, in 2019, I actually had another child in right. 2020 at the beginning of 2020. And obviously this is now, what, a few months before lockdown. Mm. So I had a business partner at the time and we were doing multiple events, both online and in wow. person until the lockdown came. Okay. And then when lockdown came, we were actually very lucky within the business. We weren't a a legitimate business yet. We were still just testing the waters a little bit, seeing how, what we could do and what, what, what different markets could we actually tap into? Yeah. And we got a lot of requests from universities, from okay. schools and from multiple organizations to okay. do workshops online, similar to what we were doing um, in real life before lockdown. And then it became a thing where me and my business partner, we were like, OK, maybe we could actually make this a legitimate business. Mm. Maybe we can do something with this now. And we decided to make um, an online membership. Right. And this was to focus on, again, women to showcase their 
creativity, their organize their organization, so on and so forth, mm. but all within a hub online right. where they could then do different workshops and stuff like that. Mm. And that was great. Like the first few months of that, that was really, really good. And mm. we, we the money was rolling in. We had people, very loyal subscribers. And then it got to a point where my business partner decided to leave. Okay. And I completely respect her for that. Yeah. As I said, I had now two children. She had two children as well. Right. And we were both young mums. Yeah. And it got to a point where I think for her, because it wasn't her initial passion, yeah. she had other passions that she wanted to pursue, right. which I, I completely respected. But at the time, it was so difficult to like... Yeah take in because yeah. this was one half of, of the business yeah. this was someone who took on a lot of responsibility right. and even though it was like okay now I have all this control I had nowhere near as much time to fulfill yeah. it all it's taking on two people's worth of work exactly on your shoulders yeah exactly while trying to deal with two little baby yeah. human beings and for about a year I was completely lost. Right. I just didn't know where to go with the business. I didn't know what to do. I knew that I always wanted to, to continue it, but I just thought, how do I now do this? Yeah, yeah. So then the journey kind of went online. There was nothing there. I had to take the subscription down, which was right. from an ego and a pride thing. It was so painful. It's devastating, it's isn't so it? It's so painful when you have like a big hype about something. Everyone's like yeah. really happy and supportive. And then it goes. Mm. Even though the story behind it, it's not personal, it can it feels very personal yeah. at the time. So then I decided to just create the business plan around my own personal skills. Yeah. And I decided to start doing um like one to one mindset coaching, right. going into schools, going into banks and mm. multiple different sectors doing mo uh, motivational speaking around right. the mindset and emotional right. intelligence and stuff like that. And that's where I've been now for the past year or so. And yeah. thankfully, again, I think it's because of the trust that a lot of people have had behind Female Magic and the great work that we've done. I've managed to create basically a full-time income wow. through Female Magic Wow! in a way that I didn't think I ever would. I know. <sighs> come on, come on, <laughs> Esther. Oh, that's amazing. It, it's, it's such a that's good amazing. feeling. It's definitely such a good feeling. But... For me, like this is what I sh this is what I teach people. Yeah. My own personal journey was trying to create happiness for myself, and now I do that throughout my business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And how how do you feel then about where you are with female magic now, and maybe where you think it's going in light of that kind of really difficult time of having to accept such a drastic change to the business? Is it more of a you're happy with where it is because of what the business is giving back to you? Or is it that you're happy with the new look of the business? Or do you miss a part of the, the business that you've had to take away? Ooh, so let me try and Because it wasn't part down. of the plan, was it? So no, it's like, it was never part of the plan. Yeah. And I always, I didn't realise how much I needed yeah. someone to some degree. Yeah until that person was gone mm. but that's because female magic at the time it was a community focused event uh, sorry a community focused business yeah and to have a community you have to kind of have a few people on board to yep. ensure the members in the community are taken care of mm. and so I had to kind of cut off the whole part of it being a community and to me that felt wow. so selfish yeah because yep. I'm such a giving person I want to be there I want to service I want to be a service and yep. I want to help humanity so mm. to feel like I can't help everyone really pained me mm. um so for a while I struggled with self-validation right and I believe now in hindsight I was on survival mode just trying to get the money yep. trying to get the next book just to keep going to yeah. prove to myself and everyone else that I can do it without this person mm. but that wasn't really the case mm. now in hindsight I know that I just had to trust in divine timing mm. um I actually have now started another business with wow. someone else. It's an extension of female magic, but it's the community side. Right. Okay. And that alone was really, really hard. And I want to stress that because we are now creating something very similar uh, in regards to a community that I had with my old business par partner. Mm. And to one, put myself back in that position. Yeah. Two, trust that this person wants to commit. And three, believe that people are going to believe in this yeah. as a second time, which is really, really difficult. Mm. And for a long time, I didn't want to be in that position or even share that. 
Mm. But it's got to a place now where the work that we give to people, people always come back. Yeah. So, yeah. And when it, in terms of female magic in the next few years, we're going to smash it globally. I because do you know what it is? I believe it. Women need the, the knowledge that I have and that I want to share with women about their bodies and their yeah. minds. A lot of it, now I'm here, I think we should know this. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that we should be taught in school, yeah, yeah. but we're not. And as a woman, the, the older you get, the more you want to discover yourself, the more you want to actually master mm. yourself. Mm. And a lot, of, a lot of people don't even know where to start mm. with that. Mm. And I've been on this journey now since the age of 16, wow. trying to do that, so... You've been on a journey, Esther, man. I've been on a journey, man. Flip and neck, flip and neck. Okay, okay. So we've heard a little bit about female magic, the journey that you guys have been on over the last couple of years. I guess my question then is looking forward, what does female magic look like to you? Where is it going on? In an ideal world, what should it look like 2033? Um, in an ideal world in 2033, I see myself traveling the world, teaching the same knowledge. Word. Um I want to teach as many women as possible about emotional intelligence, about mm. the cycles, about how to control your cycles and your mind and how to actually use these things to your advantage mm. in order to actually regain your own power and gain control of your own life. Yeah. A lot of women, especially mothers, you don't feel like you're anything. Mm. And that's the honest truth. After you have children, you just think, what is life? Mm. It's really difficult. And I'm not... And I don't say that to put any mother down because it's so difficult. Sometimes I, I question myself, why am I trying to run yeah. now two businesses with two children mm. who are three and eight mm. years old? Mm. A lot of people would wait, but I have a very strong burning desire to do this. And yeah. thank God it's kept me going mm. and I have a great support system. But yeah, that's, that's where I see us globally. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I guess... Thinking back to, I know you keep referring to being a mother and how that has kind of, how you've had to juggle that responsibility while building businesses. My question is, what what has that looked like behind the scenes? I know it's quite a personal question, but we always see like, we always see the front side of someone, don't you? You always see the social media, you always see the the polished version of someone on the front, but no one ever really genuinely sees the struggle mm, yeah. of building something from the ground up from scratch while managing your own personal responsibility and your relationships at home? What, what does that look like? Yes. So I think the best place to start is when I had my first son yeah. because I had him at nine, I had him at 19 and right. I was pregnant at 18. Right. And my family were supportive, but they were also very firm on you still have to mm -hmm. continue with your education. Yep. And I believe that's where it started. Right. Um, I had to go to uni when my son was 10 months old. Wow. He came to uni with me sometimes. <laughs> he even came to some of my um, assignments and stuff mm. like that. And I think from then, I believe that I have to always work hard. I've got to always be 10 steps above. Yeah. Or in front, sorry. Like in my second year, I was already planning for my third year of uni. Right, right. And I've kept that mindset. But like I said, I've also had a lot of, I've been in survival mode for a long time because mm. it's this constant trying to prove to yourself that you are more than whatever you think you are. Yeah. And behind the scenes is tears. Mm. It's heartbreak. It's constant guilt feeling mm. like I'm, why am I like sacrificing this time with yeah. my kids yeah. and not just being there? Why can't I just stop thinking about work? Because mm. it's like, if you have your own business, the business is 24 seven. Yeah. So sometimes if my child wants me, I might be sending an email and in my head I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm, I feel so bad that I'm yeah. doing this right now. Yeah. But it's really, really difficult to stop. But I've got to a place now where I have chosen to, to some degree, put put the family first and put my mental health first right. and the business comes second. Right. And I've got myself into a routine where I try and get up before the kids get up. So I'm, I'm trying to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Wow. So I have that two hours to do what I need to do. Right. And then the, the day starts with my children. But yeah, it's hard. It's so hard. Mm. I don't know if I'd recommend it to other parents. If anything, I'd probably say wait till the yeah. kids are a little bit older if you can. 
but I'm someone who has such an amazing support system. I have an mm. amazing partner, my mum, mm. like I said, my my kids are in the park right now while wow. we do this. They travel with me as much as they can. And mm. for me, the more I see the business excel, the more I see their lives excel. It's if beautiful. I'm traveling, they're traveling. Yep. If I'm going to a different country, they're going to a different country. Mm. They're going to see a completely different way of life. So I like that. Yeah. I, I find that really beautiful in that you're carrying your family with you as opposed to compartmentalizing and saying, yeah. I'm going to leave my kids at home while I, but actually know that it's your whole yeah. world, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They have. They, I want them to understand this is this is my business. This is my work. It doesn't have to be like this. This is what, every time I bring them to something, I'm opening their eyes to yeah. see what their lives could be like. Yeah. I want my children to be owning businesses before they're yeah. like, it, latest out. 20s if I can Woo. push it to like 18 <laughs> I'll try <laughs> pressure no pressure at all okay no I really like that okay I guess moving on then so we've 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 looked at female magic your journey we've looked at sort of the challenges across the along the way we've looked at where you're seeing female magic in the future we've looked at you juggling the responsibility of mothering while building a business. My question is for the, I know you said that you wouldn't necessarily advise other people to take on all that responsibility at once, but what would you advise yourself at age 18 when you had your first child in anticipation of what you were about to experience? What word of wisdom would you have given younger Esther keep faith mm. always keep faith when I was 18 I was struggling with depression okay um from the age of 16 right. I was struggling with depression right um I did attempt suicide okay and I didn't want to be here mm. I just did not want to be here at all mm. I was ready to be just not be here I just think my I thought my life was not worth living for a long time until I was pregnant with Kamai God bless him and I tell him I don't tell him that part but I tell him <laughs> thank God you are here and I yeah. thank I thank God all the time that you are here because you saved my life wow when I was pregnant with him that was the the, the ultimatum because I knew when you are pregnant with a child, they can feel your emotions. Mm. And for a long time, I thought, I cannot let my child feel what I'm feeling now. Mm. And for, that was kind of the catalyst to help me with my own mental health journey. Wow. And then when I started on my own mental health journey, I tried to do like counseling. I tried to go to therapy and stuff like that. But I was someone who really struggled with communication. Right. So every time I tried to communicate, they just there was just just a block. But right. then there's also the cultural block yep. as well. Yeah. Where you're trying to speak to them about something, and they might they might be calling it abuse, but that might just be how black yep. people speak in a passionate way. Do yep. you get me? Yep. So there was no one for me to really speak to, and I started to just journal give myself journaling prompts to um, mm. go through every other day. I started to journal how I feel. I started to track when I was happy, when I was sad, mm. so on and so forth. I started to, um, this is when I started to learn about the mind. Right. How can I actually c take control of my mind? How can I teach myself to be happy again? Mm. Because I don't know where to start. Right. And then from then, the the life the manifest the manifestations started to come so if I could say anything to my 18 year old self it's the same thing I'd say today is keep faith mm -hmm. and trust in divine timing mm. that's beautiful Esther. That's, that got really deep really quick there Esther I wasn't ready <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready sorry girl but thank you thank you for sharing that yeah, yeah um okay. wow okay so coming to a close then mm -hmm. thank you very much for everything that you have shared um but for the person that is watching, listening, that would like to engage with female magic and the second business, the community work, everything that you are delivering and giving to the community, how might they find you right now? When is this going out again? Ooh, about two weeks. Probably okay. about two weeks. All right. So the best way to find me right now, because female magic is going for a, through a rebrand and I'm giving myself about six to six to eight months for this rebrand okay um so the best place to find us is on instagram okay and through the instagram you can find links to the mighty networks which is where the community is right and just briefly on the community that is a space where myself and my my business partner we are sharing ancestral spiritual knowledge right um it's really cool when you learn about the mind there's a lot of scientific stuff around it that a certain 
I guess, group of people want to learn and understand. But for me personally on my journey, the deeper I've gone into myself, the deeper I've understood myself and the spirituality. And when it comes to um, the wellbeing community, mm. especially the Western European community, they mm. like to share a lot of new age stuff yeah. and trends. Yeah. And I'm not about that. Okay. You won't really see me <laughs> sharing trends and stuff because mm. I want to pay homage to my ancestors. I want to pay homage to the people who have had this knowledge for centuries. Mm. It's just been lost. Mm. So through the membership, we are teaching women the spiritual side of their lives, the okay. manifestations and stuff like that. How do you actually take away energetic blocks? How do you work with your womb? How do we do womb healing and sister mm. healing and mm. work with archetypes and stuff like that? Mm. So if you're down with stuff like that, that is the place to be. You heard it guys, <laughs> that's the place to be. Okay, lovely, thank you very much Esther. And yeah, is there anything that's coming up in terms of events that we need to be looking out for? Or are we just watching this space until yeah. we're I'm watching saying, this space? I'm saying watch this space for now. Mm -hmm. Just watch this space. Okay. I'm taking it slow. Yeah. I'm taking it easy. And, and that's, that's the right what, thing to yeah, do. That's what I say to anyone who is trying to start a business. Don't get into the toxic hustle culture oh, stop of that. just yeah. trying to work 24-7. If yeah. you look at look at successful people online, like the actual successful people, they'll tell you work smart, not hard. Yeah. You don't need to work 24-7 to I'm be a millionaire. That, I'm with that. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, thank you for speaking and sharing your journey on being black in Britain. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. To so make sure you don't miss the next one or the one after that, ensure to follow us on all podcast platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.